<laughs> well, it changed quickly, then. It yeah. <laughs> just like, boom, all of a sudden, we switch and that. Hey, oh, good morning. That's it. <laughs> all right. Is that all right. it? Yeah. You don't have anything today? Yeah. It's been a good week, right? It's a good week. Busy week. Busy, busy as it could yeah. be. Yeah. Good week, though. Bible school going on. Hey, we had a good week of Bible school. We really did. Thanks to all the teachers, helpers, van drivers, uh, people provided food, served, cleaned. Um, I mean, everything. Every single person has something to do with it. Thank you. Because it was great. We averaged over 100. Yeah. About 107, maybe, or 8. I think Bible school is back, man. We had a great yeah great week and uh, it was good a lot of the parents participated i would say it was just a fantastic week amen and we Rick just need says he's a product of vacation bible school right rick he yeah gives credit to that saying uh, oh we do better job saved. than that though yeah we yeah we do better don't use that as an act uh -huh. um, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding david's right that's how important that it is bbs is so and a great ministry we just now need to get our people to, to start, uh, you know, bringing kids to Sunday school and, uh, right. and, and youth. The, the most important ministry we have uh, is the ministry of our youth, right. of reaching them uh, with the gospel of the Lord Jesus, teaching them the Bible, giving them a biblical worldview versus the, the worldview they get in the world. Uh, so it, it's the most important thing we do. And, we just need to focus on the youth. Yeah, come out Sunday school, 10 o'clock. Uh, so, yeah, if you're not aware of that, we do mm -hmm. that Sunday school on Sundays at, at 10 o'clock. Wednesday classes at, uh, at 7 yeah, on Wednesday. Yep. Well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's been a good week. You know, I always tell a little story and all Yeah, that. you do, little stories. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was thinking back to the old chemistry class and all that, you know, do the old experiments. Some of them work, some of them don't. Anyway, I had a little story, a little joke about chemistry. But oh, yeah? Well, later yeah, on. I decided not to. I was afraid I'd get a bad reaction. <laughs> yeah. You did. I did get a bad reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a bad reaction. That vision no, was true. No, I jokes aside, we did have an interesting conversation. Bible school there till last night, I think. Yeah? Well, I had some folks say, man, you get up there and sing old songs and hear people's. Let's say amen. You know, we've heard all our lives. They'll say it differently. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Different amen styles. Why somebody ask me a question? Why don't they ever say a woman? Why don't they say amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I bet said, you well, have well, an answer, though. Well, I started thinking. So I said, I'll come back today and I'll try to give you an answer. I figured it out. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. We sing hymns, not hers. There you go. Yes. And then, there you go. So then you balance it out with a man rather than a woman. We yeah. Sing, that's we good. sing hymns. Yeah. That's, hey, he's always on top of things. That's a, Try that, to figure things out and give you an answer. That's why he's such a, a leader, valuable leader in the church. Yeah. Hey, let's talk. We got some visitors today, right? We do. I think we do. I, I think I saw some people who are either new or back with us. Who all you have? Oh, you all were here in, you know what? I didn't even think of her being a visitor because she's here VBS all right, week. She's visiting with us. We thank you, Christy, right? I'm so glad you're here, God bless you. I was taking her for granted. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen her every night. God bless Thanks. you. All right. See, there's VBS. See how VBS yeah. made a difference. Others who are new. Uh, Right in the middle of there, now, those two ladies sitting there. Now, I don't, have I seen those here before? They're by Sherry. Well, glad to have you all with us. What's the name? All right. Glad to have you Amen. all Amen. Good. Glad to have you back. Yeah. What about over here? I see Jim Pearl. That fella, he's been here before, but glad to have you. Toby, right? Tony, right? Amen. All right. Glad to have y'all with us. Yeah. Amen. Good to see you. Anyone else? Anyone else? New or visiting? Or? All right. What about birthdays real quick? Yeah, we have some birthdays now for sure. Nina, Nina. had a birthday. birthday. All right. Happy birthday, Nina. Johnny. 
All right. Sasha? Oh. Uh, what's your name now? Yeah, she had one. All right. Tomorrow and Nina and April, that's right. April and Cindy. Cindy. Sheila. Jason. Jason. That's right. Jason's was yesterday or something, wasn't it? That's right. Man, I always send you a text and I forgot. Oh, we got several here today. Fantastic. Anyone else? Did I miss? Lindsay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. How about uh, anniversaries? Any anniversaries? How about 10 right there? <laughs> Courtney's like, no. And <laughs> Cody's proud. Uh, happy 10th anniversary, you all. All right. Yep. Any other anniversaries? All right, everybody. All right. Birthday is an anniversary. Fantastic. All right. We were ready Amen. to be in our service last week. I'm ready. All right. What we got today? Lost our way last week. What's your message? Today? Is what? What are you thinking about? What's on your mind? Okay. Yeah. You know? So right. what's the question? What's on your mind? What's on your mind? And what, what you should be today? on your mind? All right. Should not be on your ready? mind. Are we ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah. You, you I'm stand. just talking. 367 <laughs> as we begin the service. His way with thee. Oh, we're charged next week, right? The baby bounce next week. Bring them in. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? And would you walk with him within the narrow road? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you. Father, we thank you so much for this day and for all your blessings, your goodness. We thank you, Father, for the way you love us unconditionally. We thank you for the Lord Jesus that you sent to be our Savior, our sacrifice. We're thankful he died on the cross for our sins and our place and rose again to give us eternal life. Father, we're, thanking, we're thankful for the power of the gospel to change lives and we thank you for the opportunity to praise and worship you and to lift up Jesus. And I pray you'd please bless this service. I pray, Father, that uh, every single person would not only be blessed, but be convicted, be challenged, uh, be changed. I pray, Father, that you have the freedom to work among us today. Uh, please anoint every phase of our service. Uh, please receive glory from what we do. And I pray for the needs of every person here, whatever they are, if they're, uh, if they're health, uh, financial, spiritual um, issues in their lives, family, whatever they are, Father, I just pray that you would meet those needs, that they look to Jesus for the answers, they look to your word for the answers. And I pray, Father, you touch every person. I pray that especially if there's anyone here without the Lord Jesus as Savior, that today they would be saved. Please, Father, help them not to wait any longer uh, to put aside any and all excuses and just come to Jesus. We pray for those watching our program, you'd meet their needs also, be a blessing to them, and we pray that those who are not saved would come to Jesus today. Now, Father, we thank you for the opportunities we have to worship, the opportunities we have to serve, and I just pray 
for your uh, direction upon our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Turn to 363, I believe it is. Living for Jesus. last Sunday night and it turned out pretty good and uh, it is called I'm too near home to turn back now
this trumpet sound. Bum, bum, bum. Hold my feet, they won't stay on the ground. Now I'm gonna rise with my shell. I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna ride with my Lord through the sky. Heaven is near and I can stay here. Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, just one verse for our text, even though we'll talk about some other, other verses in addition to this. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise or anything praiseworthy, think, meditate on these things. Father, we thank you for your word. Uh, it is powerful. It is living. It is sharp. It convicts. It challenges. Father, we just thank you for your word. And I pray as we study together that every word spoken would be yours and not mine. I pray your word um, gets into our hearts and minds and that your will is done by us and to the church. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. So the Bible prevents, uh, presents an option here of things to think about compared to things that we many times are thinking about and maybe we shouldn't be thinking about and this option is let me just remind you of these uh, things that are true things that are noble things that are right things that are pure things that are lovely things that are good anything praiseworthy the bible says think on these things these are things that ought to be on our mind rather than the things that many times are on our minds. So the question is today, what are you thinking about? What's on your mind? Even this morning, uh, throughout the service, it'd be interesting to know, wouldn't it, if like in the cartoons, uh, used to be in the, in the funnies, who would call them in the paper, uh, where the little, the little cloud would appear up above our, the people's heads and, and tell you what they're thinking or or what they're saying, and it'd be interesting um, if those little clouds popped up. How would you how would you feel about that? How comfortable would you be on in the service? If I mean, I'm talking about after the service began, and even while the songs are being sung and the words being uh, read and a, and a prayer being prayed, I wonder what would pop up. What little cloud would pop up? What would it say? What were you thinking about? Uh, what's been on your mind even since service started? Has it been purely worship? Uh, are, are you thinking about uh, wh what you're going to do this afternoon? Uh, what, you know, what's for lunch? Uh, what kind of plans are you thinking about this week, maybe, and all that's going on? Were you thinking about uh, somebody? Uh, were you thinking about how and what, uh, what made them think they could wear that and get away with it? <laughs> But what made them think that that matched up? Um, I mean, what, what, what were you thinking about? What's been on your mind even since we, we came into service? Well, you know, there's, there are times uh, that we have things on our mind that should not be there. Whether you're, whether you're an unsaved person, uh, whether, you're, whether you're a believer, uh, whether you're a disciple, been saved a long time, um, there's things that get on our minds that shouldn't be there. They're not helpful. They're not good. As a matter of fact, they even lead to even more trouble. And so the Bible presents these things to think on. 
You, you know, our minds are supposed to be transformed. The, the Bible says over in, in, in uh, Romans 12, 2, it says, Be you transformed by the renewing of our mind. It is very important what you think, not just what you say, not just what you do, because what you think will cause you to say what you say and do what you do. It's very important that as Christians, we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit and to the Word of God to control our thinking. Our thinking must be transformed. And so the scriptures here give us a couple of scenarios that are the wrong things to be thinking about. Now, one of them, is in verses 18 and 19. And these are things that are wrong. These are wrong things. I want you to look at these two verses in Philippians 3, chapter 3, uh, verses 18 and 19. It says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. And so he's talking about enemies of the cross of Christ, and he describes them like this. He says, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. Now listen, who mind, here we go, who think on, who think continuously on earthly things. Now the Bible says in Colossians that as Christians we're to set our minds on things above. We're to set our affections on things above. We're to be thinking about home where our citizenship is, not loving the things of this world as it says in 1 John 2.15, love not the world nor the things that are in the world. In Philippians 2, it says that we should have the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we should have his attitude, his thoughts, his things should be on our mind. And so the Bible is clear that when we're saved, our thinking has to change. We can't think the same old thoughts that make us say the same things and make us do the same things. It has to change. It has to be transformed. And so look at this first one then. And, and this is wrong things. Thinking on wrong things. And we look at this passage. And here I'll just put them all uh, together. Is wrong things. Are you thinking on wrong things do the do the wrong things fill your mind fill your thoughts even in church you're thinking about the the wrong things you're not thinking about the the lord jesus christ you're not thinking about the good things of god you're not thinking about the things that matter but you got other things wrong thoughts going on in your mind well, this is what the Bible says. They're enemies of the cross. When, when we're, when we're the, these enemies of the cross, uh, thinking wrong things, there's some things going on in their mind. Now, first of all, we need to understand that their end is destruction. If you're an enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, of his cross, of the simplicity of his gospel, you're an enemy of the cross, and you're headed for destruction. Remember last week we talked about there's a way that seems right, but the end is death. The end is destruction. And so for the person who is an enemy of the cross, meaning they have rejected God's love, they have rejected God's Son, they have rejected the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, their end is destruction. Now, there's no other way to put it. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Their end is eternal damnation. They're going to a literal hell forever and ever and ever. 
And so people's thoughts, when, when, they, when they will not think about, consider the things of eternity, consider the, the, the wrong things in their lives, consider their own sins, consider the love of God, when they won't think about those things and, and turn to Christ, their end is destruction. Now, here's what the Bible says about them and about their thoughts and about what's going on in their minds. It says that their God is their belly. Now, that doesn't mean literally your belly, as in your God is your belly and your eating habits. And, but what this, is, what this word in the language means, your God is your self and it is your lustful, uh, your unbridled, lustful desires. That's what th this means. That deep inside, your mind continually runs on yourself and your lustful desires. Uh, th this, is, uh, th this is, we talked about Solomon last week. Uh, we talked about the, the things being as the days of Noah when they were thinking uh, wicked thoughts and, and their mind was continually on doing wickedness and, and rebelling against God. But the people who are the enemies of the cross, their God is self. And they spend their lives pleasing self. And they won't turn to Christ because they want to please themselves. It's always about them and their desires and what they want more than being what God wants. And your thoughts, your, your lusts, those continuous things that's on your mind will keep you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Will, will, will cause you... Uh, that, to have an end that is destruction. Now, not only is, is their God themselves and their lustful desires, but their glory, now look at this, their glory, look at verse 19, is in their shame. And this verse glory means, in this passage, it means their reputation is in their shame. Now we're supposed to bring, as Christians, we're supposed to bring glory to God. We're supposed to live lives that magnify the Lord Jesus Christ and bring glory to God. But for those who are the enemies of the, of the cross, those who are always thinking about themselves and, and the lust, the desires that they have for themselves, th their their reputation of shame, their shame is their reputation. Their shame is their glory. And what they'll be remembered for are those, it is the shame of their lifestyle, the shame of their thoughts, the shame of their constant pursuits for these lustful things. That's what the Bible is talking about. Their God is their belly. Their reputation is in their shame. That's what they think about. I've often asked you to think about the legacy that you leave. I know all of us in our lives, we have failures. Uh, we, we have sins that bring uh, great consequences. But it's never too late to do the right thing. And we need to think about First of all, of course, eternity and, and going to heaven rather than hell. But we also need to think about the legacy that we leave for others, especially our children and our grandchildren, as in what will they remember about us? What are, what are the important things that we have left them to remember, to, to value about us? And these people who are thinking the wrong things. They're not thinking of eternity. They're not thinking of others. They're not thinking of a legacy. 
They're not thinking of the right things. They're thinking only about themselves and this moment and how they can please themselves and their reputation will be their shame. And then it says about them that they set their mind on or they think about worldly things. Their mind is always on worldly things. Now what about you when we when we examine our own hearts and minds and 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 you may be saved I hope you're saved. I hope everybody in here is saved. That's what we desire is that everyone would be saved. But what do you think about? Do you, do you think about pleasing the Lord Jesus Christ or pleasing yourself? Do you, do you think about uh, making a difference in somebody else's life? Or are you always thinking about yourself? Are you thinking about Jesus and being in heaven with him? Are you always thinking about this life and how much you enjoy this life and what you'd like to have in this life? Are you thinking about laying treasures in heaven, laying up treasures in heaven? Or, or are you all about what you can get here? Because what you think will be what you say and what you do. And so just examine your own minds and what are the things that you think about? What's on your mind? And then there's another thing. And if you think that's bad, this is even worse. Because the other thing in this passage that, that uh, Philippians 4, 8 deals with is not just wrong things, but it deals with worry. It deals with worry. Are you worried about things? Is that always on your mind? Are you worried about anything at all? Anything? Are all minds clear today? Not one thing you're worried about? Well, here's what the Bible says. Be careful for nothing in Philippians 4, 6. And what that means in our language is don't worry about anything that's what it says not my words god's words don't worry about anything but instead it's saying but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god and the peace of god which passes all understanding now listen will keep or guard, we're talking about thinking now, what's on your mind, it says will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Right. Over in the passage in 3, 18 and 19, he's talking about people who, whose mind is always set on, their thoughts are always about themselves and their own pleasure and worldly things. Now he's talking about people whose minds are, are always on worry about something or someone. And so when they worry, when their thoughts are on worry, they build up fear and anxiety. We can, listen, the Bible says that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. We can't live our lives in fear. You can't enjoy what God has given you when you're always worried about something or afraid something's going to happen. You know that something like 90% of the things that people worry about never happen. But what it does do is it makes us sick. It make us, makes us lose our faith. It makes us lose our hope. It makes us lose our health. And so, we're not, as Christians, we're not. So, if you're unsaved, you need to worry. I'll just tell you that right now. You you need to worry that God is going to give you another opportunity, and 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 that that you're going to do the right thing and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. But if we're saved, if you're saved, 
then in our lives, the Bible says we're, we're not supposed to worry because it brings fear. It brings anxiety. We're always tore up about something that's going on or something that's happened. And how, much, how, how many times can worry change something that has already happened? Well, of course it can't. But what about worry changing the things that are going to happen? Well, it can't change that either. So what it does, it destroys us spiritually. It harms us emotionally and even physically. And so that's why the Bible spends time talking about it. Because the Lord Jesus wants us to live a life of victory. Now, it does not mean you're not going to have bad things happen in your lives. We know that in this world with a curse on it and in these physical bodies, we're going to suffer. We're going to be sick. We're going to get old. Things are going to happen. There's going to be tragedies. There's going to be all those things in this world. But that doesn't mean we live in worry and fear and anxiety if we truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and in what the Word of God says. Worry brings stress to our lives too. Man, stress is one of the worst things. Because we're always worked up. We can't relax because of stress. Amen? amen? I told you it's going to be hard, but it's still okay to say amen. We're not going to think you're stress-free or worry-free, but it's true. Man, it can cause stress, which then just takes away our, our joy. You know, nothing in life should take away our joy. There's that happiness and joy are so different. There's things that can make you happy and things that can make you unhappy. But because we've got the Lord Jesus Christ, and because our joy depends on Him, not circumstances, we ought to have joy that cannot be taken away Amen. by whatever is going on. And then, and not only stress, you know that worry makes us impatient. The Bible says, wait on the Lord be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. But we start worrying about things and we want to take care of it like right now. We want to make sure everything's okay right now rather than wait on the Lord. And so when we're impatient, then that bothers other people, doesn't it? Bothers God, it bothers other people. Rather than being able to wait calmly on the Lord Jesus Christ. And his timing. And then it is the absolute opposite of trust and prayer. You cannot, you cannot trust the Lord and worry at the same time. You can't. And you should not waste your time praying if you're going to worry. Unless you're going to pray that you don't worry. But you can't. Why, why would you pray and act like you're going to trust the Lord. When as soon as you get through praying. You're going to keep on worrying. Amen. Amen. Kenny uh, mentioned the passage the other night over in Matthew 6. Uh, 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 where the Lord Jesus was teaching. He said now why do you worry about these things. He said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about these things. I take care of birds. I'm going to take care of my children. I take care of the fields and the flowers. I'm going to take care of my children. And so we're either going to trust him or we're going to worry. But our mind... Our mind, we start thinking about all these things and, and, and what could happen and, and, and that we've got to be in control. We've got to take care of it. And we can worry, 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 but we're not in control. The Lord Jesus is in control. And we have to trust Him. We have to trust our loved ones to Him. 
We have to trust our lives to Him. We have to trust all that we have to Him. Trust in the Lord with all our hearts. But rather than wrong things or worry about things, the Bible gives us these things to trust or to uh, transform our thinking. And so the Bible says, rather than filling your mind with things that are harmful, that lead to destruction, rather than fill your mind with worry that brings anxiety and fear and stress and doubt and, and, and takes away your, your, your prayer life and, and takes away your faith, the Bible says, think on these things. Fill your mind with these things. And these things are things that are true. And you find those things in where? The Word of God. The Bible is true. Now, do we fill our minds with the Word of God? Do we read and meditate daily? Do we study God's Word? If we fill our minds with God's Word, there won't be room for other things. It's like we talk about filling with the Holy Spirit, which is a control thing. It is letting the Holy Spirit control our lives. But if we're full, if we're full of ourselves, there's no room for the Holy Spirit. And if our mind is filled with God's Word and God's things, then there's no room for the devil to throw things in there. There's no room for junk and all the things that we that we deal with. If your mind is full of faith, there's no room for worry. If your mind is full of truth, there's no room for deceit and lies and things of the world where they present them as if they're right, but the Bible says they're wrong. And so we need to fill our minds, our thinking with things that are true. And then there's things that are noble. By the way, when Jesus prayed for us, he said, sanctify them by your word, meaning build them up. Make them like me by your word. And he said, your word is truth. And so we have the, all the confidence in the world. Our Bible is truth. It's not just true. It is truth. Jesus is truth. And then things that are noble, and this word means honorable. Uh, it, it means to revere. Uh, for us, maybe we understand it better, it's things that should have priority. Think on things that should have priority. You know in your lives what ought to be, what have, should have priority. It ought to be God and family. And then all other things after that. Amen. But we have to put God first. We need to think on Him first. And then on our families. But we get so many other things going on in our minds and in our thinking. So we, we think about what we've got to do uh, to the house. We got to, what we have to do at work. Uh, what we have to do to the yard. What we have to do at this and that and all of these things. And if we're not careful... We're not thinking about what's most important. And that is our relationship with the Lord Jesus and our family. Think on the right things. Things that, get, that should have priority. Now I've got to hurry on these. Think on things that are right. The word righteousness, just the most simple thing. The way to explain it is things that are right. Think on the right things, not the wrong things. You're Christians. You know the Word of God, and you know things you should not be thinking about. You know how Jesus taught that it's not just the act of things, but it's thinking about things. It's lusting about things. It's wanting to do things that are, that, that are the sin themselves. He taught, thou shalt not commit murder. He said it's not just the act of murder. But it's hating someone. It's wanting someone to die. 
He said it's not just committing the act of adultery, but it's your lustful thoughts that you want to, you wish you could have someone, be with someone. It's all of those things. It is not just the act. It is, it is the thought. And it all begins in the, in, in the mind. King David, he looked at Bathsheba and he thought how beautiful she was. And he thought about being with her. And he sent for her. And they committed adultery. It starts in the mind. And our minds have to be thinking on the right things. Not the wrong things. And not things we worry about. Fill your mind with right things. Good things. True things. Noble things. Right things. Pure things. These are things that are holy, godly. Things that are undefiled. And then he says things that are lovely. And these words mean gracious, pleasing to God. When we're thinking about things that are gracious, we don't say things or send things that are corrupt communication. We don't say things or send things that, ca that cause harm to the cause of Christ or to the church or to our own Christian reputations. We think before we speak or send. And then there are things that are good. We also know what things are that are good. They're good things, not bad things. Right things, not wrong things. And then anything that is praiseworthy. And let me just close with, uh, I'll run through this. And the, the, here, here's what I want you to see. In Proverbs 4.23, look at that. It says, guard your heart, which is your mind, with all, listen, diligence. Diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. What you think will be what you say and what you do. It all begins in the mind. We've got to guard the mind. So how do you guard the mind? With God's word. You guard the mind with guard, God's word. You transform the mind with God's word. And then you think. You think on things that are true, noble, right, lovely, good, praiseworthy, all of these things. Now listen, why is this important? What's in God's Word, that makes it important. Everything in God's Word is important or it wouldn't be there. And everything in there is God's Word. But it's important because as a as someone who's unsaved, if you don't think about these things, if you don't think about eternal things, uh, what's going to happen after death? If you don't start thinking about how do we reach heaven, uh, how do I find forgiveness? If you don't start thinking about these things, you will never be saved and you'll end up in hell. Now that's why it's important. You need to think about these things and do the right things. And as Christians, it's important that we're thinking about the right things so that we'll say the right things and we'll do the right things so we won't be led astray doing wrong things. As a man thinks in his heart, that's who he is. We've got to guard our minds and what we think because that's who we will, that's who we will become. Amen. Amen? Let God speak your mind right now. Father, we thank you for your word, for its truth. And Father, we know that your heart, that your word convicts right into our minds and what we're thinking. 
Right now, your word is convicting us to examine our, our minds and what we're thinking, what's always on our minds, what's most important to us. We'll be thinking about what's most important. I pray, Father, we'd guard our hearts, guard our minds, guard our thoughts. I pray as you speak to us this morning, if there's someone who needs to be saved, I pray they would be saved right now. They would come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Help them to think about what's going to happen in eternity, what's going to happen after they die. Help them to come to Jesus. As Christians, I pray, Father, we'd just guard our thoughts. We'd fill our minds with the right things and the good things of the Word of God. That would be, we'd be determined to be like the Lord Jesus. Lord, if there's things there that you reveal to us this morning, I just pray we'd confess those and ask you to fill our minds with the right things. Make us like Jesus, I pray. In his name, amen. Please stand for our invitation, please. And, and uh, would you bow your heads? Listen carefully. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. There may be someone today in here in our service that's not saved. You've never trusted Jesus as your Savior. If you'd come this morning, we'd be glad to kneel and pray with you and talk to you about the Lord Jesus. But just come and confess your sins. Believe that Jesus died for you. Believe he rose again. Believe he's the only...